Are you a bit fascinated by witches? You should watch Helen Ivory's episode of Meet the Poet. Are you gooder than good in a basket of good, unbinding the bad with your charming white wand? Or is your scandalous body the root of your power? Are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? My name is Florrie Crass and you are watching Meet the Poet today with Helen Ivory. We are discussing witches, women and otherness in her upcoming poetry collection, How to Construct a Witch. If you like this episode, do please like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on socials at Homestage Poetry and of course sign up to our poetry mailing list to be notified about all things poetry related at Homestage. Now let's get started. Helen, welcome to Meet the Poet. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. I've been swimming with seals. <laughs> for everyone watching, I've been hearing so much about these swimming with seals and I'm so jealous. <laughs> no, it's just amazing that we have this in Norfolk. We're able to just, you know, drive down the road for half an hour and you're at the beach and you're swimming with seals. So, yeah, it kind of, yeah. Anyway, it's an excellent start to the day. Hello. <laughs> I can't think of a better start to the day, actually. Swimming with seals, that's so dreamy. Um, okay, so we are here today to hear about your upcoming poetry book, How to Construct a Witch, which is coming out with Blood Axe. Um, where to begin? So why witches? Where has this come from? Where, where do witches come from? Um, it comes, well, um, my last collection, <laughs> which I have to hand... <laughs> The Anatomical Venus was about women and otherness, so how we've been seen as hysterics, you know, if there's something gone wrong with us. And um, one, one of the most othery things that, um, that there have been about women is just the idea of, of witches and um, female power. And um, so in, in that book, I, I touched on it a little, but um, it just gave me the appetite to... Um, to just do a whole load of research because I, I love research and what you can cram into your head and somehow the poem comes out. Don't ask me how. I don't know that process. <laughs> Some kind of alchemy. Um, but just massively interested in that subject and cultural representations of the witch. And, um, yeah, I keep saying arm. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't worry at all. I'm such a, an um person as well. I notice it all the time. <laughs> I must stop. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so that really. Yeah. So it feeds on quite a lot from from the anatomical Venus. Um, and can you sort of like give us a, a bit of background, maybe to to these witches? I, we will hear quite a lot about it as we go through the poems and this history. But yeah, is there some some background that you can give to witches for people who might not even actually know a huge amount about the history of witches? Okay, the history of witches. Well. The so the, um the first one of the the first witch in the um Bible well let's start with the Bible but let's not but let's start with the Bible was um the woman the woman of Endor when she when Saul goes to talk to her and at, at that time witches or soothsayers or or any person like that was just chucked out. There was, God was saying, no, we're not having any of that. I I am you know it's me. <laughs> you don't want that lot. Um, but he goes to talk to her and she's just called the woman of Endor and so she's the, the first witch in the bible I mean the bit witch is in in myth um you have Circe there's just you know once you start researching it's difficult to know where it began but a lot of our current feelings about witches are to do with female power either fear of female power or with with feminist it's embracing your female power so yeah it's it's I mean some people choose that choose the witch identity now I mean you can buy all kinds of kits in in, in you know that, that are witch based and and if you you know you you can buy scents you can buy lots of different things that are witch based you can buy witch makeup you can dress up as a witch you can go gothy I mean I, I was a goth teenager, you know, so maybe, you know, it, it's been in my blood, this, this witchiness, and it's only manifested intellectually with all my research and everything that I've been doing. 
Um, so I don't know if that gives you any kind of foundation, but I mean, I have, I have books. I, you, you can't see how long my arms are, but I have books longer than my arm span of, 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 that I've been reading. So all my research, you know, there's, there's a lot of it. <laughs> and once you start reading, you realise, you know, how much more that there is. You know, you read the Hansel and Gretel and Marina Warner, you, you know, it can go on and on. So th this is what I feel like I'm barely touching the surface. And at the moment, I'm, I feel like I'm trying to um, explain a PhD thesis. You know, you go, you just try, trying to, you know, make it into a tiny sen tiny sentence or a tiny paragraph, which yeah. is which is why I write poems. <laughs> That's exactly what poetry is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly what it is. You know, I, I always think and, and say that writing poems is a bit like making marmalade or making jam. You know, you've got all of the stuff and you're just trying to make one jar of something and that someone re would recognize rather than this all all this amorphous weirdy stuff that i've been talking about and trying to put <laughs> um, uh, yes yeah, try try and make sense of things um is one of the reasons i write poems and trying to make make sense of all this research and some of my research i mean it's so it's in it's in culture it's in films it's you know it's it's all over the shop um really you, you can get a witchy vibes playlist if you go on spotify um, I've seen that. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It's ev that this symbol is everywhere, and it's so interesting to see how it's changed from like centuries ago. Which is exactly what you do in in your poetry and in this book, where you kind of managing to distill all this research into a book. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, let's jump in. Let's hear the first poem that we've got prepared. Um, I think this one is Only Bad Witches Are Ugly. I'll hand over it, to you. It is indeed. Thank you. Yes. So um, this, so part of my research, if we can call it that, is um, I've been watching The Wizard of Oz. And so The, the Wizard of Oz, I mean, it's, it's a film I've loved um, since I first saw it. And, but now, intellectually, you can see that it's, a, it's the polarity between good and bad. You know, you've got the, the so the bad, the bad, which is she has green skin, she wears a pointy hat, she has flying monkeys, you know, all, all this kind of evilness. And um, so she looks like she looks bad. And then the good witch, who's Glinda, um, is and is some she's called a witch fairy. So and she's all pink and you know, she's all that kind of thing. And one of so the poem that I'm going to read. Um, the title of it is something that Glinda the Good, so this kind of pink um, witch who, um, or woman, witch, fairy woman, she um, she says, so the, the title is, Only bad witches are ugly. Do you light from the skies in the blush of a bubble your gown all glimmered with stars? Or does the earth spew you forth in a wretch of red smoke? Are you more peaches and cream or frog in a quagmire, opiate stoned in a cradle of poppies or rattled awake in the dash of a blizzard? Are you gooder than good in a basket of good, unbinding the bad with your charming white wand? Or is your scandalous body the root of your power? Are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? Indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love that last line, just the way it sort of summarises it all. And I think this is a good poem to begin with, just because it's it's one that like most people will be familiar with The Wizard of Oz. It's a nice place to begin. Um, and obviously, as you said, it's sort of, I mean, it, it's this women being unfairly pitted against each other and how you can have a good witch and a bad witch. But what is it about this witch fairy? Like... Tell me more about this. I, I, I don't know. It's just interesting to me that it's the witch fairy that you, they still can't seem to have just a witch that you would be perceive as good, if you see yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it takes the edge off her, doesn't it? Also, I mean, she has... So the, the evil witch, um, she, she says things and she creates them just by watching when she says poppies, poppies, and, you know, poppies appear. But when, when Glinda, she, she has, she doesn't say it. She doesn't, she doesn't use her body to create it. She has a white wand, you know, it's, it's something else, you know, it, it's a, it, it's coming from somewhere else. It's not coming from her physical body. And 
bodies are scary. You know, the female body has been scary for um, for men and probably for some women um, for a long time because we, you know, we can we can create. You know, when when we get older, um, you know, we we can't, we're leaky. You know, we. <laughs> <laughs> Love <I'm on>. that. <laughs> but you know we, or, or, you know when, when we get older then then we kind of you know we become undesirable so there's there's you know three stages of of femaleness um you know there, there's the there's a hot young witch there's the mother witch and then there's the throne you know there, there are these very distinct categories like the polarities between the good and the bad you know it's Culturally, we like to see things like that um, because I don't know. It, it makes sense, doesn't it? Um, it's not fair. <laughs> but if you're, if you're writing a story, um, it, it it makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, so Glinda is all pink, isn't she? You know that and that's a fe- that's you know traditionally a, a female color. Yeah, um, that, that's the thing. I think there's something about in order to, for people to embrace and celebrate Glinda rather than, you know, the other witch, which we don't celebrate, there has to be something that sort of like diverts from that history of like what a witch is and the sort of witch that would be persecuted. So making her pink and having that wand, which you say sort of separates her from yeah. the action of what's happening. Yes. It's a very clever way actually to get us to be on, on board with that witch when Definitely. we wouldn't have before. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, in, in films and stories, you need that strong imagery, don't you? Uh, really, so you need to know how to feel. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> it, yeah, it just makes it easier for everyone, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so that's, this is the first poem. Um, let's head over to the next. I will hand over to you for your second reading. Okie dokie, thank you. So my next one, one of my... Um, favourite um, recent poems is The Witch, um, the Robert Eggers film from 2015, um, which is a long time ago, probably. Um, so the, it, it subtitles A New England Folktale. And the narrator to this poem is Black Philip, who's the goat um, in, in the film, if you've seen the film. And um, the, the goat actually does talk in that. And the goat is very likely, almost definitely the devil. And what he says um, to Thomasin, who's the young girl in the film, who's a girl, I think she's about 14. So she's on the, the, the brink of womanhood. At, at that time, so this is in New England, so... At that time, life is harsh. You know, if you've seen the film, I do recommend the film. I don't want to over explain it, but her life has been harsh. And she has been, anything that goes wrong, if it can't be explained, then it's witchcraft. So she has been called a witch already. And again, I don't want to dis- <laughs> tell you the film, I don't want too many spoilers. But what Black Philip says towards the end, um, he says to her, and this is the title of the film, Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? I have marked you at the gateway to the forest, inhaling the wild wood like medicine. And I have sent the most velvet of hairs as a gift of my heart to usher you from the burdensome world. You have been the pious daughter washed your father's rags in the brook. Have you not earned enough of God's grace? Your parents bade you pray for light while heaping shadows around your character. Hearken as they brand you witch without a lick of proof. Come, follow, I have such bounty for you. There is always a little bloodshed when a woman is born. Brilliant. <clears throat> um, I mean, something I want to ask you is, do you ever feel uncomfortable in your research into witches? Or do you, as you said, as a former teenage goth, do you relish looking into this darkness? Does it sort of sate that desire? Yeah, I do relish it a bit. I mean, but so, so many people in history have been tortured and, you know, killed, die, um, because they have been called witches 
Um, so, yeah, that makes you feel, feel a bit uncomfortable. You know, it, so when you research online, you you get names, you, you, you the names of the women, because as I say women, it is largely women um, who were arraigned as witches um, in the Pendle witch trials and, you know, all the other witch trials. So we still have the records of those names. And so the kind of women or people that they were, they were working class, they were poor people. Without those records, they wouldn't exist because they weren't important enough. So, you know, there's that part of it. Um, And also, I, I don't know, just seeing their names, you just... And yeah, there, there is a, a poem a little bit later that I'm going to read, um, Lilius A.D. Um, shall, I, shall I go on to that now? Shall I, Actually, shall I... Yeah, yeah, there are some yeah. to be made, yeah. Yeah, so, the, so this person, if so if you Google Lilius A.D., I think that's how you pronounce her name, it might be Lilius, she's also called Lily A.D. So um, she was living between 1640 and 1704. So she was a Scottish woman who was accused of witchcraft and fornicating with the devil. And she died in prison um, before any sentence could be passed. So the types of torture that these people would undergo um, would be pricking. So with a very long needle, you can see these needles in the um, Witchcraft Museum in Bodcastle. Um, they are really, they were about, I don't know, three inches long, four inches long, I don't know, massively long needles. Yes, and so people, like any marks on the skin, moles or, you know, warts or anything, they would just prick them. And if they were the witch's mark, then that would be a place where they didn't hurt and didn't bleed in those particular places. But in the meantime, before you find that, if you find it, you know, this person is being treated as a pincushion. So there's that kind of stuff that goes on. And also one of the other forms of torture um, was walking and waking. So sleep deprivation. So lots of confessions. Yeah, so th- this is still being being used as a, a way to get stuff out of people, um, you know, in various places now. So you keep them awake for as long, you know, before they become unconscious, which is days and days. And then you will say, I mean, you know what it's like when you haven't slept for a couple of nights properly? You know, you start going loopy. Um, So they would just keep them awake. And they would say anything just to make it stop. You know, you would get stuff out of them and, um, you know, you can invent things. And the more, more wonderful or if you know the more you can use your imagination the the longer that they will stop because they're writing it down people are writing down also i'm sorry i kind of i'm on a bit of a rant because no, it's also- fascinating please keep going <laughs> the people that are taking records um are the the men who are in theory taking down the words but they are also making them more elaborate they're also trying to get some kind of case together and in the Lilius Aedes case the words that they said that she said um, were something somebody else said 50 years before verbatim I mean I've I've got this section in the poem it's in italics in the poem Um, so all kinds of yeah so, so while I kind of relish the subject, you kind of think, oh, these names. And if you Google her, you will see her her face because they they found they took photographs of a skull, and then they lost her skull. Um, but from the photographs, they managed to forensically make the face. So you actually will see her face appear, and she's just like a nice nice older lady, really. And so then, yeah, then you think, oh, these aren't these aren't stories. This isn't, you know, this isn't juicy. This is um, these are real people, and, you know, and this has happened to them. So shall I read? Shall I read the poem? Yeah, please. So the the quote that I've got at the beginning was from the Daily Mirror from twenty seventeen, um, which is "Witch who had sex with the devil." So this is Lilius A.D. 
And still the clickbait designed to pique a fever, though clicking arrives you at a neighbourly face conjured up forensically. She'd been six foot tall according to her bones, buried into tidily like suicides, pressed down by a stone to down reanimation. Such wickedness requires a belt and braces execution. Who's to say the devil will not wake her to bring about more sickness to the fold? A podcast now, and Lilia's confession, we learn, is duplication of another peasant woman's admission some 50 years before. The devil put one hand on the crown of my head, another on the soles of my feet, and claimed everything between as his. Then you learn they lost her skull a hundred years ago and the image of her face is drawn from photographs and her bones were gathered up as trinkets. Even wood from her coffin you can see in a museum whittled to a walking stick, fancied up with silver. Oh, another brilliant piece. I mean... Mm. The, what this makes me think of, kind of, what you've touched on already, is, I mean, these these poems make you think of these people as real people, as you said. You feel connected to them, especially this woman who, there is that, the digital reconstruction. You, you look at her and you think, that's just a, a person who was persecuted and whose mm. life was made horrible. And I think the thing that really struck me in this is just how much their autonomy has been lost even after death so even you know their bones as he wrote gathered up uh, wood from her coffin in a museum the fact mm. that they lost her skull after she died it's it just never ends yeah it's extraordinary isn't it yeah it's, yeah it's the yeah it yeah anyway <laughs> sorry i was just i, can't, I haven't got the words that's why i wrote the poem <laughs> like, it's, it's in the poem. poem it's all in the poem and, and it, the, the, the clickbait as well, the, the daily mirror thing, that, you know, which who had sex with the devil. And then it's, you know, a, night, a picture of a nice lady and the actual story. But that's that's just the thing to get you in there and get you interested. Yeah. yeah. It's just so odd for someone's life to be reduced in that way, I think, to that thing. And, I mean, it, but I think what is really special about this is how at least the poems we've heard so far and the ones that we will hear, they just create this like lovely lineage of people that as like a woman in this day and age, going back to centuries before, you can feel connected with these people and sort of like give them some sort of respect by writing about it, which is, I think, what, what you've done with the poems. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's always a bit of a worry because in my last book, I um, I went into the Norfolk Record Office and I, I there, there's some names there for, for um, women that were in the asylum. And, you know, it's always a bit of a worry speaking, you know, in these people's voices because obviously, you know, I'm a poet that's going there and it feels like you're using them, their, their lives. But at the same time, I want to draw attention to, you know, what, what's gone on. And, yeah, uh, it's like... Yeah, no. but I think given how much research you do into it, it's all from like a like a point of interest and just sort of observing and telling their stories for them is the impression I get. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's what I want. <laughs> no, yeah, a, just a fantastic poem. And also, I mean, I didn't mention this um, on the poem before, but I just had to say, I think so. This was in um, uh, "Wouldst Thou Like to Live Deliciously." That line, there is always a little bloodshed when a woman is born. I have to say that is, I mean, I almost don't have words other than it's just brilliant. I've I read that so many times and every time I read it, I thought that is a fantastic line. Thank you. Have you seen the film, by the way, The Witch? I haven't. I had to look it up. Yeah, I haven't seen it. And I watched a little section of it as well on YouTube. And it's it was very sort of, um, very dark and sort of, <laughs> And that was that was the section where the, that title was yeah. said, um, and it did whet my appetite a bit. So yeah. I didn't really see it. Yeah, it's all in. I mean, I I watched it about three times in a row because it's all in Jacobean English, so you really have to lean in to hear what they say. So I watched it without then I without subtitles. Then I watched it with subtitles. <laughs> I can hear exactly what they were saying mm. and then I watched you, you can actually get the script so I read the script as oh. well yeah. yeah 
Um, I, and I do love a bit of like Jacobean yes. drama. Like I loved, um, so this is going very off piste, but I loved like studying John Webster and right. like the Duchess of Malfi, the White Devil, yeah. all those sorts of things. Thought that was amazing. So yeah, just language use and yeah, the I mean the Robert Eggers, um, he really yeah. wanted you know that that's the part of the authenticity, you know the way that they spoke and their accents as well because uh, they they would have I can't remember what they've got a kind of northern um, accent. She said in a <laughs> a vague way, yeah, yeah. northern, some way yeah. north. Well, not new, you know, people that would have arrived in New England, uh, you know, right, right then, um, they, they would have come with that accent. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of, it's just very earthy, isn't it? And the colours of it and, yeah, it, it feels like you're there. It's, it feels very, very genuine when you can't time travel, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, I think let's hear your next poem, which is Margaret Johnson. Okay, so Margaret Johnson. So she she's one of the names um, that I called up because you can call up names online, can't you? You can immediately, you know, have the whole person there just by calling up their name. And Mar so Margaret Johnson, um, she self-identified as a witch. So saying that I mean I, I when I was talking earlier about you know feminists now say you know I'm a witch so she, the idea of Margaret Johnson so this is for the Pendle witch trials in 1633 powerless poor voiceless people would say that they were witches because otherwise you know they don't have an agency you know they they just, um, that there, there would be no way of people like Margaret Johnson. I assume, I know nothing about the woman actually, but that, that <laughs> there would be no, no way of people like her. I mean, she was a widow, she didn't have any income. People would, you know, she would go and beg. I'm assuming because people did, you know, they, they would go and beg and trade things. Um, so, you know no way of her living otherwise so part of part of that you know she said I'm yeah I'm, I'm a witch I can do this I can do that um and you that pup yeah anyway I won't go go into that a little um so in in the trial um the pe in the Pendle witch trial she was declared not a witch and I just think how massively galling you know because she you know she was like you know the devil came to my house I went to the sabbath you know I danced <laughs> I flew all of that kind of thing um so yeah how galling and, and also I mean I, there were three other women that were declared not witches at the time but they still remained in Lancaster jail for many years after in any case I don't know you know why or how but that you know that's just what happened to people anyway so here we are um so this is from the 1633 pendle witch trials and margaret johnson days were moonless drab and i was a sack of bones in my widow house seven years this went part somber part vexed wholly disremembering of the sun then he came, all silk garbed, all sleek furred, and the promises. It was as if he had heard my prayers indeed. He pricked my flesh, sucked my slow bud till I quick quickened and felt my spirit siphon into him. Though I repent this transaction now, I had no prestige until the devil lost his shadow over my heart. Since this trouble hatched, he has forsaken me. I cannot send my spirit out to avenge those who need tormenting. Yet history casts me out as not a witch. If I was not a witch, how did I meet the night's wings? How did I fly? Oh, I love it. It's a great, like, complication of the image what you were talking about earlier of the whole actually using the term witch to for self-empowerment it's a complete reverse of it but then also 
like still like when when you say history casts her out it's like you can't you can't seem to get it right either way whether you are a witch you're cast out whether you're deemed not a witch she is still cast out there's like the irony in that is like i don't know it's quite awful but yes. you, like, you can't seem to get it right either way yes yeah I think, like yeah just the idea i don't know i think it's ha- I just the idea of her identifying as something and then somebody coming along and said, no, you're not that. <laughs> Whatever it is, no, no, you're not that. With you know, I'm marking this down in my book and that's not it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the ultimate powerlessness, isn't it? Someone saying you're not who you say you are. Yeah. I mean it's it's like that's the, the constant thing throughout these poems is how being like branded external like from external sources so again in was thou like to live deliciously when it's the um the i mean it, the witch being branded externally heaping shadows around your characters hearken as they brand you witch without a lick of proof and again in this being branded not a witch again without a lick of proof despite all this thing at the end where you where she says how did i fly like it's it's ridiculous that these other people would have so much power to fix those labels for them. Yes. Yeah. I'm always I'm I'm putting myself in their place. When I was like when I was in the Norfolk Ref- Record Office when I was researching women that had been institutionalized for I don't know things like singing in public places. You know, I I've said poems in public places whether people want them or not. <laughs> <laughs> Any number of things that people have been institutionalized for in the past, you know, I, you know, I, I would be one of those people. The, the, oh, I don't know. The, the, so the, the, the people like, who would I have been then? I'd be me, but I wouldn't be a poet. You wouldn't be wanting to talk to me, you know, like two hundred. I'm sure I would, Helen. I'm sure I would. <laughs> You'd be hung up as well. You do poems. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? <laughs> I would still, I don't know, like, yeah, I always try to put myself in these these kind of, you know, what would I do? What would I do? Uh, yeah, I'd be, yeah, anyway, a domestic servant coming from the class that I do, probably, you know. Yeah, that's and- amazing to think about. Mm. Um, okay, well, we have just two more poems left from you. Um, I think let's hear your penultimate poem, which is To a Painter. Okay, so this poem... Uh, more of my research just looking at paintings of um women as witches and you know you you, you've probably seen the images you know women flying around and then there's the the as i say the young hot witches that the older ones are trying to corrupt and there's there's all that kind of stuff going on in, in any number of these paintings and in this poem to a painter um Yeah, I'll just read it, I'll just read it. To a painter. How, pray, is your cow skin glue distinct from charming? You take the hide and tendons, hooves, boil them up in that scarred cauldron, and the stench enough to bid the beast from many miles or slaver moored more quarry for your pot. Fancy keeps you company while your bed is bare, idle hands grope for brushes, Ah, such renderings of midnight. You are haunted by flesh, are you not? I wonder if this exorcism purifies or stirs up the appetite. Paint me now astride a broomstick, my contorted face all seized by flight. Depending on my time of life, I am the maid ripe for corruption or the long, long dug ruined hag, while you, sir, are fixed rigid, the loudest voice all penneth spent. Thank you. This feels like a very imaginative, creative one, um, which I really like. It's sort of you. I can see you channeling that persona and it's really interesting to see. Um, I think it's just I also I mean, that distinction at the end that you mentioned, either a maid ripe for corruption or the long dug ruined hag. Again, there's just like no hope. It's one or the other. And you just that's it for you. (laughs) Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's nice so, to have a cat, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, and it's all, all the, it's just to do with the bodies and how useful we are, isn't it, really? 
you know, whether you, you know, you can have children or you cannot have children and older women and women that were, you know, couldn't have children were, um, yeah, they're, they're no, no longer desirable. And they was thought that they were jealous of the younger ones that could have babies. So, you know, just got a bit mean with it, uh, really. Whereas a lot of them were thinking, well, hey, thank God that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Helen, where where can people actually? When can people expect to see more of these poems out in the world? Um, when when is this book planned to come out? Wow, um, I don't know. I mean, it'll be it'll be finished. Um, I told Neil Bloodax that it, it's it'll be finished about October um, this year. So I'm I'm hoping it'll be next year. I don't know. Blood Axe published other people as well. So it's... <laughs> I, have to wait. I have to wait until... Until, yeah, it's a, it's a really fantastic list, actually, Blood Axe list. So, yeah, I, I, I need to wait until it's it's my turn. But it's hopefully it'll be next year. Hopefully um, next year. Uh, hopefully next year. Fantastic. Well, everyone at home, keep an eye out for when that does come out in the world, because I'm sure there'll be so many more fantastic poems in there to devour. Um, but Helen, thank you so much for being on Meet the Poet. You've been a fantastic guest. And it's been really, I mean, interesting, but also actually very educational, learning about this history of, of witches and everything that I didn't know a huge amount about before. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I will hand over to you for your final reading, which is more thoughts on the moon. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I didn't think that um, people have written enough about the moon, really. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd have another go and knock, knock, knock another poem out about the moon. Um, so uh, traditionally, women are, have been associated with the moon. You know, we have our, our menses and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it's how, how, you know, anyway, I'll read the poem. Um, so more thoughts about the moon. Someone picked the moon to be your avatar. Swooned up on your beauty, he invented the metaphor for the fulgent, unreachable conundrum of your presence. When he got a grip on gravity, he blathered on about the heady dance of earth and moon in each other's gravitational pull. He'd set himself up as the earth, of course. His ardour in your maiden and your mother days was resolute, but as he waned his word, he could only see the carrion, that old word for crone, scraping dead flesh off the underpass. A goddess is a goddess is a goddess. Why rename her as she orbits you, O oh Earth? And if she appears all dark of the moon, it is because your rotation is too fast. The moon's path around you is widening by the wingspan of a wood nymph moth each year. Perhaps it's time to take a hint. It seems she'd rather lay her bets on emptiness. When you were ripe, the doctors cut you from my branch, packed you whole in ice so you wouldn't bruise, searched your maggoty core for rot. I wish I'd seen you, weighed you in my hands, breathed your fizzing orchard scent. <laughs>